But here we go. We're kind of done with kind of the more, you know, traditional games. All these series pretty much existed before the Nintendo DS was a thing, but all the games that were coming up after, actually, I see some Pokemon stuff coming up, but a lot of what we're about to see here is all kind of stuff that I got into after the DS had come about. So unlike today, where, you know, many of the games I play, it's kind of usually sequels to games I already like or, or such like that. But these are all things that before the DS came out, I never imagined I would be into, and yet they all consumed like hundreds of hours of my life. And we have to start with Phoenix Wright. Ace Attorney. I mean, people all probably know about this game and how fantastic it is. Uh, it is just a beautiful game. Uh, I was never really into like, you know, like text adventures and stuff at the time, but I got my hands on this. I tried it uh, and I absolutely loved it. I just fell in love. I played through it like nonstop. Uh, and it was so cool. And it's weird because I didn't get into it when it first came out. By the time that I had played Ace Attorney 1, I usually call them by number because I mean, the subtitles really become mouthfuls at times. Uh, Apollo Justice was already out, so I played this, I found out about it, I absolutely loved it, and, uh, and then the next day I just went down to the store and I got like all of them. Uh, so yes, they are all just fantastic games. Again, I mean people all probably know what Phoenix Wright is, we're just going to make sure that there's no kind of games hidden in any of these. Was there anything in Mega Man ZX? Yeah, Mega Man Zero 3. Uh, and yeah, like, I mean, you know, there's the investigation phases where it is kind of more, you know, it's like investigating the crime scene, but it's the court stuff, you know, where it really goes down and just, you know, like slapping people, uh, you know, finding the contradictions in their testimonies. Absolutely awesome. Ace Attorney 3. Nothing inside of that one. Of course, in Japan, they are actually numbered. There are no subtitles. It's just, da it's uh, not Dai Gyakuten Saiban. Ga Gya Gyakuten Saiban, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Dai Gyakuten Saiban. 1 and 2, but those ones, the Die Gact and Simon games actually had subtitles, which is kind of funny. Uh, Apollo Justice, is there anything inside here? No, there is not. And then after kind of the main Ace Attorney games, then you get to where the series is really good, yet I don't think that they sold very well, unfortunately. Uh, the Investigations games, where now it's not just kind of point-and-click adventure, but you actually walk around and uh, investigate the crime scene. Uh, there's like a, you know, a lot of things, the new things like the logic added in, uh, in Investigations 2. They even add in, like, logic chess. I thought that was such a cool gameplay mechanic. Investigations 2, I think there's an English patch now. I don't think the English patch is super high quality. I think that it's... I don't know. I, I, think, I, I think I looked into it, and it's like... I wasn't happy exactly with some of the things, some of the decisions that they made. But uh, it's an awesome game. I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend playing it if you are a fan of the uh, Ace Attorney games. I think uh, Gyakuten, uh, yeah, Gyakuten Kenji 2. Uh, Ace Attorney Investigation 2 is probably my all-time favorite Ace Attorney game. Uh, I don't know if that, you know, if I would feel the same if I played the translation. Hopefully the translation, you know, holds up all the way through. But if you are a fan of the Ace Attorney games and you have not played Investigations 2, you have to. It is a must. An absolutely fantastic game. Uh, after that, though, we get into another series which definitely has some relation to the Ace Attorney games. And this is a series I also did not get into until the third one was pretty much already out. Uh, I, again, I was huge into Ace Attorney, and then it was announced that there would be an Ace Attorney Professor Layton crossover, and I always thought of get, uh, thought about getting into the Professor Layton games, but I don't know why. I guess I just never did because I had a lot of other stuff going on, and you know I didn't really feel like I needed another series on my plate at the time. Uh, but then when I heard about that crossover, I'm like, okay, well now I have to find out more about the Professor Layton games. So I bought the first one, and I absolutely fell in love. I think I love the, the uh, Professor Layton games now more than I even love the Ace Attorney games, and Professor Layton himself is one of my all-time favorite video game characters. These are just awesome games. They're all about solving puzzles, solving a mystery. The music is always beautiful, just like, you know, in the Ace Attorney games. Absolutely awesome music to go along with everything you're doing. Animated cutscenes, they are awesome. I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend playing these uh, Professor Layton games, and I hope that someday we see, like, you know, HD remakes of you know, the original ones. I think that in Japan, unfortunately, only. I don't think they're here. Uh, the first, I think, three, or maybe only two, the, the earlier uh, Professor Layton games that were on the DS now actually have HD mobile remakes, but I would love to see that come to the Switch at some point, which might happen, because it seems like Level 5 likes to bring their mobile games to console, uh, you know, after a while. So we'll probably end up seeing that, but nothing inside of that case. Uh, Diabolical Box, of course, comes next. Nothing inside of that case. Starting to get a little bit worried here, because I don't know where the games will be if they are not inside here. 
and nothing inside that one. Oh, we actually have, that's right, there were four latent games on the original DS, but only uh, two on the 3DS. Actually, technically, if you include uh, Lady Layton, I guess that makes three, and nothing inside of that one. So we're really getting into the final stretch here now in terms of, you know, games that we have to look at. And we can't you know, lose focus of the fact that we're supposed to be looking for Donkey Kong Country 2 for the Game Boy Advance. It's getting kind of scary. I don't know if we're going to find it. And if we don't, then I'm really wondering, you know, just exactly where it is. Again, a very kind of strange scenario for me considering I don't usually lose things like that. Uh, maybe it just got out of Health of Lake Order or something like that, but, you know, I'm not going to lose hope yet. We have about 10 games to go, and the next one is Hotel Desk Room. 215. The Hotel Desk games are absolutely awesome. I mean, I say the Hotel Desk games. It did have a sequel, which was European only. Well, I mean, rather, it was in Japan, and it was unfortunately then only put uh, localized into English and released in Europe, and never came to North America because Sing, the company who made it, went bankrupt not too long after. But these are both absolutely awesome games. You hold the DS on its side and it just takes advantage of all the different features that the Nintendo DS had to offer, like the microphone and being able to actually use two fingers on the screen at the same time, which is something that like you know, no other DS game really makes you do. Uh, just awesome mysteries. The characters are awesome. The music is awesome. The style is awesome. The art, like, the art style is great. Uh, I cannot recommend these two games enough. I don't know if it, you know, maybe Hotel Dusk 1, like, what's with the art? Like, I have the Japanese versions as well. And this is the Japanese version of Hotel Dusk, where it's actually called Wish Room, uh, Angel's Memory, and, like, I don't know, it's just so weird. Like, this one, is this looks like he's, like, sinking into the floor, and then there's, like, a girl in the door for some reason. Uh, like, do not go based on the art. This is one of those, you know, classic don't judge a book by its cover games. Uh, it's just awesome. It's about, you know, an ex-cop from New York, moved to California, gets involved in all sorts of kind of, you know, strange kind of incidents that involve his past. This one's more about the past of his partner from when he was a cop. This one's about the, you know, strange death of his dad back when he was a kid, solving that mystery. Uh, and then it definitely looks like they were building up to there probably being a third one where a lot of the things that are kind of, you know, loose ends in these two would have then got tied up. But I mean, I'm used to games that I play not getting a third one. Let's see how many of those I can name. Uh, Star Tropics, Mega Man Legends, I mean, Ace Attorney Investigations, it would have been cool if they had a third one, but I guess it's not necessarily necessary. Uh, Hotel Dusk would be another one. Uh, I played Half-Life 2, Episode 2, and I feel like I'm the one who killed the series, because then there wasn't a third one of that. Uh, and it's just, you know, part of the course. I know there's definitely other games, too, that I love. I kind of stopped after two of them, but you know, I'm just very used to that. But again, unfortunately, especially because it feels like there's a few loose ends between these two games, it would have been neat. Oh, I never showed the Japanese one. Uh, this one's kind of funny. It's the same cover, but for some reason the Japanese one is during the day, where the, uh, the localized one is at night. I don't know, I guess they felt like that made it spookier and more appealing to a North American audience. I don't know, but they are both fantastic games. And since there's not really like a series name, I call them the Kyle Hyde games because that's the name of the main character in both of them. But if you're looking for awesome DS mysteries that are just, you know, just awesome all around, everything about them is great, definitely check out those two games. The next game up is Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. I did, I got the order right. Sometimes I say Nine uh, nine Persons first for some reason. Uh, this is another one, like these are all games, like the Ace Attorney games, Professor Layton, uh, the Kyle Hyde games. The 999 games, which then had two sequels on the 3DS and Vita, uh, like, I never would have imagined I would be playing these when the Nintendo DS came out. And yet, actually, I haven't been looking inside the games to make sure that there's nothing in them. Actually, I did look at this one. Kyle Hyde 1 does not have anything inside it. Did I show the inside of Kyle Hyde 2? Also, I guess people may be wondering, yeah, this is what the European DS games look like for some reason. They have these really weird, thicker, clear cases for some reason. I guess to make sure, that, like, uh, some European games have manuals that include all the different languages, so I guess maybe that is why they made the case thicker, so they could insert that, but you know, it's funny because games these days don't even have manuals at all, so uh, that's just kind of, you know, an interesting relic of the past, but Nine Persons, Nine Peoples, Nine, door, uh, nine Hours, whichever one it was, uh, it's an awesome game, another one of those kinds of, you know, touchscreen mysteries, escape room exploring kinds of thing, uh, really, really, really fun. And I do miss kind of having, you know, the DS and the 3DS because it was just so perfect for all these kinds of games where you had that stylus and the touchscreen. It definitely feels a little sad not having a Nintendo console anymore where that's really relevant. I mean, the Switch, I like playing games on the TV, so I definitely don't want to, you know, have to take them, hold it on the, you know, hold it undocked and touch the screen with my finger. I liked 
the way that the DS and 3DS work, so I definitely do miss that to a degree. But I do also love the Switch, so I'm not going to complain too much. Alright, here we go, Diddy Kong Racing. I think this is the, the next time when a Nintendo 64 game was remade on the Nintendo DS. I love, absolutely just love, Diddy Kong Racing. So I definitely was a huge fan when this came out. I got it, had a lot of fun with it. I think there's some people who aren't such a huge fan of the remake. It makes a few kind of odd changes, like it seems every, uh, every remake does. Uh, but it's still great, and it even had like a few new tracks in an online mode, so that was all fun to mess with back in the day. It also had a track creator, which was very basic, where like you just drew the track with the stylus, and then you could just, you know, determine how bumpy and stuff it was. It, it was pretty basic, but no, no, it's not in there. I figured if it would be in any case, it would be this one. Now I'm really wondering where it is. This is, this is getting scary. So it's not inside there, but again, I, I definitely like the uh, DS remake of Diddy Kong Racing. Another game I never would have ima imagined myself playing before the DS came out is Brain... There it is! There it is! We found it! Why, are you Why is it inside Brain Age? What does Donkey Kong Country 2 have to do with Brain Age? <laughs> it's mind-blowing! I mean, maybe, by, maybe Donkey Kong Country 2 makes you smarter? Or maybe playing Brain Age makes you better at Donkey Kong Country 2? I don't know, but there you go. The whole point of this video is now a success. I wonder if I just put it into the wrong case because they're right beside each other. I have no idea, but I never would have thought to look inside of Brain Age for Donkey Kong Country 2. There you go! It's saved. Now I can make that video, so I guess expect that one coming up in the near future. I guess I actually don't need to look inside all the cases anymore. Brain Age, I liked the first one a lot. I never really played the sequels. Just a cool little game to you know, get, your, get your mind working on, uh, what's it called, you know, on math problems and all that kind of stuff. Very good. Uh, we're going to speed up a little bit now. Lost in Blue is a game that I bought new. Like I said, I had a subscription to Nintendo Power back in the day, and I actually saw this one and thought that it sounded cool. Uh, I was never very good at it, though. I never beat it. Uh, it's very kind of, I mean, it's not realistic, realistic, but, I mean, there's like a, you know, like a thirst meter and a hunger meter and a fatigue meter and stuff, and you get stranded on this island and you have to find a way off. Uh, but I was always very bad at it. I'd always like, eat the mushrooms, but oh wait a second, those mushrooms are poisonous and stuff like that. And I'd go exploring, and oh wait a second, you're like, you know, you're starving to death. And it's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> Hopefully I never get stranded on an island, so I'd probably be very bad at it. But, uh, so yeah, that's the kind of game that that is, and I think it had two or three sequels as well. So, I mean, it was obviously popular enough for that. Just, just an interesting game all around. Next one up is... Pokemon Diamond. Uh, Pokemon Diamond is probably one of my all-time favorite Nintendo DS games. I guess, I, like I said, I don't have to look inside them anymore, but maybe, you know, it's fun uh, to see what is inside them. That is Yu Yu Hakusho. That is a game that I got out of, like, a $5 discount bin and actually played all the way through for some reason. I know nothing about the anime whatsoever, but I guess it, des you know, it deserved to be put inside Lost in Blue for some reason. Uh, Pokemon Sapphire in there. I probably played Pokemon Diamond more than I have played any Nintendo DS game ever. Uh, or, sorry, not any DS game. Well, maybe DS game. I don't know, there's some really good DS games, but probably any Pokemon game is what I was trying to say. I took all my Pokemon from all my games at the time, you know, Fire Red, Sapphire, and I transferred them all into Diamond to try and get a complete Dex. I think I had almost 400 Pokemon in here. Uh, but I don't think I ever 100% completed it, but I just loved Diamond. I thought it was just a fantastic game. It was really what I wanted from, you know, a new console Pokemon game. So we'll see, you know, if Sword and Shield can live up to that. I then got heart gold and sold silver, which I was going to say, hopefully I don't have to open up the box and get the game out to check it, but now that we've found it, I did not have to do that. Also a cool game. Uh, people will know that around Pokemon Black and White is when I stopped really playing the games, because I, I don't know. I, I think the problem was after Diamond and after the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours I spent on that, I just didn't feel like doing that again with another Pokemon game. Heart Gold was different because, I mean, it was a remake of Gen 2, and it, I was definitely, you know, living off nostalgia a lot for that. Uh, but wow, like, even later on, when DS games started coming out after the 3DS was already out, they kind of took away the Game Boy Advance holder, which is rather interesting. But yeah, Heart Black and White were not my favorite Pokemon games. I know some people who say they love them, some people who say they hate them. Uh, I mean, that's great. Enjoy what do you enjoy. Uh, this is another game that is kind of strange. Phantom Hourglass I got back in the day. We have Four Swords Adventures in there. Or not Four Swords, is that what they call it? No, Link to the Past, just Four Swords. Four Swords Adventures is the GameCube one. Uh, I was not a huge fan. That is, sounds like a typewriter going off over there. 
I was not a huge fan of Phantom Hourglass. Uh, just because it's funny, because unlike Master of the Skies, Wario, where I wasn't, uh, where I actually really, you know, I wasn't bothered by the stylus additions and such, uh, I was, for whatever reason, when it came to Zelda. I didn't like having to draw on the screen all the time. I don't know, I just never particularly got into this game, and I never played Spirit Tracks either. Uh, but I know that some people definitely like that game. There's also My Japanese Coach, which has... If you want to learn Japanese, it's an interesting place to start, but you're definitely not going to get too far with it. Um, it also has some problems. Like, I know there's one time where you're learning how to write hiragana, and it actually shows you the wrong stroke count. So like you're trying to write the character correctly, and it's like, eh, sorry, that's wrong. And it's like, no, you're wrong, game. You're wrong. So I mean, it's interesting to look into if you can ever pick it up for like five bucks and you're really interested in learning Japanese, but there are better materials out there now. Like what year did this come out in? Uh, 2008. So I mean, the internet did not have probably nearly as good of you know, a Japanese learning library built up at that time. So you're probably just better off to, you know, go find some online resources now rather than use My Japanese Coach. But if you ever have the chance to pick it up really cheap and you want to learn Japanese, it could not hurt, is my opinion. Uh, and then we have the Club Nintendo games, the Game & Watch collection, which naturally has Game & Watch Gallery 4 in it. People will know I love Game & Watches. I love the Game & Watch Gallery games. Uh, these were exclusive through Club Nintendo. I believe they cost 800 Nintendo points. And then, you know, you, uh, so you would get those from games. I think you got 30 points for each code of a DS game you bought, 50 points for each, uh, you know, Wii game at the time. Uh, you would enter them, and then, you know, for 800 points, they would just mail this to you. And it's just uh, Oil Panic, Donkey Kong, and Greenhouse, basically, uh, Game & Watch games which had two screens flip open. I mean, they were a perfect fit for Nintendo DS. Uh, but there's no, like, modern versions or anything like that. Like the Game & Watch Gallery games had, which was a little bit disappointing. It would've been cool to actually see a real Game & Watch Gallery game on the DS, which just took advantage of everything. Uh, and then this is the second one. Again, an order through Club Nintendo. I never actually bothered opening this one because just I did not have much of a desire to. It actually has kind of, it has Parachute Octopus and then a completely brand new game, Parachute X Octopus, which is kind of cool, but I just never felt the need to open it because you know, I own Game & Watches and such, uh, but pretty neat. And then the other thing that I own is the Metroid Prime Hunters demo, which anyone who bought their DS way back when it first came out, the original version of the Nintendo DS, the silver one, I think every copy of it included this demo like years before Metroid Prime Hunters came out and it was cool because I think it was multiplayer so you could play it wirely, uh, wirelessly with friends uh, so it was just kind of a neat thing to have included with your Nintendo DS but hey we did it the whole point of this video was to find Donkey Kong Country 2 and it was for some reason hiding inside of Brain Age so hopefully I mean it's funny because you know Donkey Kong Country 2 being lost you know kind of led to me making this video and there you go, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Hope that you're looking forward to some Donkey Kong Country 2 on the Game Boy Advance. Not too much, but I mean, I feel like Donkey Kong Country 2 is something we will be talking on my channel, uh, talking about on my channel. Until the end of time, there are always cool things to talk about in regards to this game, and do not ever expect me to, you know, just like suddenly, you know, stop talking about Donkey Kong Country, the series as a whole, it's just so great. Uh, but yeah, this is my Nintendo DS collection from when I was a kid. These are all games that, you know, it's not like I picked them up later at garage sales or like off eBay, really. Uh, these are all things that back in the day when the DS was new, hit, popular that I played uh, and just had so much fun with. So hopefully you may maybe found a game here that you would like to play yourself. Uh, maybe even a Game Boy Advance game. And let me know in the comments what you like in terms of Nintendo DS games because it was just such an awesome console. And it's sad to see, you know, the 3DS on its way out so the DS is going to be officially kind of like a dead thing. Kind of like how the Game Boy disappeared in a sense. Uh, but it will always be remembered by me very fondly for just the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of fun gameplay it brought. So yeah, woohoo, I just can't get over that. Why was it in Brain Age? Why? Uh, but anyway, thank you everyone uh, for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I have no, long, uh, no idea how long this video is going to turn out to be, uh, be. But if you watched until the end, to the point where I just start mumbling on because I have no idea what I'm talking about, thank you very much. And I hope to see you next time for something different, probably Donkey Kong Country 2 GBA related. So thanks and... See you later.